Psalm 89, verse 26, He will cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. This is uh, Preacher Chris Christian, and I'd like to welcome you uh, to another uh, Rock of My Salvation Ministries video. We thank God for the privilege and opportunity that we have every time to stand behind the sacred desk, whether it be in the church, where we're now preaching at, the Vision Independent Missionary Baptist Church in Churchill, Tennessee, or whether it be in the studio uh, by way of, uh, simply by way of the video. And so, and then the many times over the years that we've had opportunity to, uh, either by podcast or by a radio broadcast, or whatever the case may be, it's our great joy and pleasure to stand and preach a message from the Word of God for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I'd like to invite you, if the Rock of My Salvation Ministries uh, channel or the Preacher Chris Christian channel or any of the other various uh, channels that we have, if they're a blessing to you, I'd like to invite you uh, to like our, our, our uh, videos, to subscribe to our channels, and uh, to share it on Facebook and other media with your friends and with your family. If we're a blessing to you, tell others about us and help us uh, to be able to get out uh, the message and the gospel ministry for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, uh, if you uh, would happen to be in the Tri-Cities, uh, that's Kingsport, Tennessee, Johnson City area, the Tri-Cities, Tennessee, Virginia area, uh, while then, or in close enough driving distance, while then we'd love to invite you to come out and be with us uh, at the Vision Independent Missionary Baptist Church on Carters Valley Road in Churchill, Tennessee. Now we're uh, approximately seven miles off of Lynn Garden Drive in Kingsport, Tennessee. If you uh, uh, turn off onto West Carters Valley Road from Lynn Garden Drive, go approximately seven miles. We'll be up on the hill on your right, right beside of the dollar store. We can't be missed and we'd love to have you come out. We'd give you a hearty welcome. We believe above all else, God the Holy Ghost would give you a good welcome in the house of the Lord. So we'd, we'd love to have you be with us and come visit with us. And if you're not able to, well then you check out my other videos, uh, either Preacher Chris Christian channel or Vision Independent Missionary Baptist Church channel or the Rock of My Salvation Ministries uh, uh, channel. So uh, 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 quite a few other messages that we have that we believe would be a blessing and a help and a strength and encouragement to you. And so we'd, we'd invite you to check them out. And again, to like our videos, uh, share uh, on Facebook and other media, uh, tell your friends about us, and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you'll be notified whenever we have a new message that's posted. So we trust that today's uh, message that we're going to get to here in just a moment will be a blessing and a help and a strength and encouragement to you. It's not a very pleasant topic. And it's not a topic that's very much preached in, in the modernistic age that we're living in. But if ever there was a time that it needs to be preached, it's the day and age that we're living in right now. And so uh, now, uh, with, uh, without any further ado, we'll present a message from the Word of God. Hey, it's uh, time for us to uh, uh, go ahead and get into the Word of the Lord. And uh, what I have on my heart today is found in the 16th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, and we want to begin reading along about verse number 19. That's Luke chapter 16, beginning in verse number 19. And as I said in the opening, uh, this is a subject that's not a very pleasant subject, but it is a subject that's very needful in the day and age that we're living in. And the thing that I have on my heart that I want to share with you uh, today in the message is on the thought of what the Bible has to say about hell. What the Bible has to say about hell. So uh, Luke chapter 16 beginning in verse number 19 and he said there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fired sumptuously every day. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, 
And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from thence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also should come to this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. All right. As I said, we want to look in Luke chapter 16, and beginning in verse number 19, and want to preach to you just a little while on the thought of what the Bible has to say about hell. And I want to say unto you, first of all, that we uh, one of the first things that we can notice that uh, Jesus says in verse number 19 of Luke chapter 16, he said that there was a certain rich man. And then uh, in verse number 20, he says there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. I know that there's a great criticism that this uh, uh, story that is presented here in Luke chapter 16, uh, 19 through 31, that it is a parable. But my beloved friend, I'm here to tell you that Jesus didn't use any of the typical bywords that he used when he was uh, giving a parable. Whenever Jesus was getting ready to tell a parable, he would use a uh, uh, phraseology like, uh, uh, what shall I liken it to, or it shall be likened to, or it shall be as if, or some such thing as that to indicate that what he was uh, going to say was a parable. Or he would come out and, and plainly say, let me tell you a parable. But we don't have that in Luke chapter 16, beginning in verse number 19, the story of, uh, of, of uh, Lazarus the beggar and the rich man, beloved. What we have there is the, the plain declaration that there was this certain rich man. There was a certain rich man and there was a beggar named Lazarus. So these were two people who uh, did exist. Uh, Jesus being God in the flesh and having omniscience, knowing all things, uh, my beloved friend. Uh, he was, he, he uh, was uh, knew about this story and knew what had happened to these two men. And so he pulled from that to give us a lesson and a warning, beloved, about how that people need to uh, uh, escape an awful place that's called hell. The only way that you can do that is through and by the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But we're looking, beloved friend, about what here in, in Luke chapter 16, uh, verses 19, 19 through 31, and uh, preaching uh, on what the Bible says about hell. And I, I want to, uh, to notice, first of all, beloved friend, and uh, uh, by way of introduction and talk to you about who goes to hell. Who is it that goes to hell? Well, we want to say, beloved friend, that the wicked go to hell. Psalms uh, 9 and 17 said, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Then 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10, uh, the apostle Paul said, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, neither fornicators, nor uh, uh, adulterers, nor idolaters, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, uh, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor any other thing like that 
Uh, uh, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So my beloved friend, they can't go to heaven. It leaves them no place to go but to go to hell. Then again in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21, the apostle Paul talking about the... Uh, 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 the works of the flesh, and, and we want to turn over and read that right quick. Uh, Galatians chapter 5 and uh, verse number 19 through 21, and uh, right hurriedly because it's, it's, it's too much uh, for me to, re to remember the whole thing, but Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 through uh, 21, he said, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, uh, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, uh, drunkenness, re re revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So there's not, no place that they can go my beloved friend, except to an awful place that's called hell. Who is it that goes to hell? My beloved friend, not only is it the wicked, but it's the good moral man. It's the good religious man that's never been saved by the grace of God. They go to hell too, my beloved. And uh, Jesus said in one place, he said, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. No matter how good you think you are, you're not good enough for God. There's none righteous, uh, Paul declares in the book of Romans. There's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none righteous, no, not one. My beloved friend, if you die outside of the grace of God, if you die without having been born again, if you die, my beloved friend, Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. You'll find that, my beloved friend, in uh, John chapter 3. John 3, 3, John 3, 5, and I believe John 3, uh, 7 or 8, somewhere along in there. But you'll find the story of Nicodemus, how that Nicodemus, that ruler of the Jews, came to Jesus by night and said, uh, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles which thou doest except God be with him. Jesus bypassed the accolades, bypassed uh, the pat on the back, bypassed the praise of man, and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not only did he say that, my beloved, but there in John chapter 3, he said, If you're not born again, you cannot so much as see the kingdom of heaven. Amen. If you want to get to heaven, you're going to have to be born again. And so those who are not born again, my beloved, those who are not saved by the grace of God are those who are going to go to hell. But what does the Bible say about hell? I want you to notice this in uh, verses 22 and 23 as we read again. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was buried uh, and uh, uh, and uh, 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 that the beggar died and was and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Notice the last part of verse number 22. The rich man also died and was buried. Then notice verse 23. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and uh, uh, seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. My beloved, may I say unto you that it's clear and it's plain by the teaching of this passage here that uh, when the wicked die, when those that are unsaved die, that immediately they go to hell. Uh, people go to hell immediately following death. At the very millisecond that breath leaves this body, if you go out of this world unprepared to meet God, if you go out unsaved, if you go out, out having never put your faith and your trust in the, in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, if you die in your sin, immediately, my beloved, you'll drop into the pit of hell. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the unsaved dead upon the point of death go immediately 
to hell. Listen, my beloved friend, Proverbs 29 and 1, he said that he that being often reproved hardeneth his heart shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. And then, then we also notice, my beloved friend, uh, 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 in the Word of God, in, in Numbers 16, 1 through 35, and, and this is a story of, 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 of uh, Korah, of Dathan, and Abiah, and how that they uh, rebelled against Moses. And Moses tells them, my beloved friend, he said, if they die, he said, gather them together, let them take their own censers, to make an offer to the Lord. And if they die a normal death, if they die the death of any other man, if they die just like any other man, then I'm not a prophet. But he said if they die suddenly, if the ground open up, opens up in, in uh, number 16 and 30, he said if the ground opens up and swallows them up and they go down quick into the pit, then he said, I am a prophet of the Lord. And the Bible tells us, my beloved friend, as they stood there and they offered the strange fire unto the Lord, the ground opened up and swallowed them and they went down alive into the pit. You say, preacher, what's that mean? They went down immediately alive into the pit of hell just like they were. I want to tell you, beloved friend, uh, what does that do with the teaching that the Catholic Church has concerning a place that they call purgatory. I'm here to tell you, my beloved friend, there is no such thing. And uh, the, the passages that they try to point to, I've never seen such twisting of Scripture in all my days. You'd read them, and if you didn't know what they were, uh, what they were referring to, you'd never get any idea in the world that, that anybody could ever come up with such an idea as purgatory, a place where the dead go temporarily until somebody prays them out of, out of purgatory. I'm here to tell you there is no middle ground between heaven or hell. When you die, you're either saved or you're lost, one way or the other. You're either going to heaven or you're going to go to hell. There is no middle ground. They who die without Jesus Christ, they who die without the blood of Jesus applied to their heart and to their life, my beloved friend, the very millisecond that they die, the very millisecond that you die, if you're unprepared to meet God, you'll drop into the pit. You'll go to hell, my beloved friend. And they that die and go to hell go there immediately upon the point of death. Not only that, my beloved friend, I want to go on just a little bit further. Look again in verse 23 and verse 24. And in hell he lift up his eyes, of, of being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. I want to tell you, my beloved friend, there is torment of fire in hell. Hell is a place of everlasting fire. What does the Bible have to say about hell regarding its fire? Notice the, at this, Matthew 18 and 8, I said, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. For it is better for thee to enter into life hauled or maimed than to be cast into everlasting fire, my beloved friend. Oh, listen, Mark 9 and 43, he said into the fire that never shall be quenched. And then Revelation 14, 10 and 11, uh, talking about the wicked dead, said that uh, those that are cast into the lake of fire at the end of the age, uh, torment that they will be tormented with fire and brimstone, notice this, in the presence of the angels and of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and forever. I'm here to tell you, my beloved friend, that there is flame in hell. My beloved, it, it is a place of torment. It is a place of anguish. Oh, listen, believe, uh, Jesus speaking of it in another place, I said there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And all this rich man, it, it said here in verse 23, in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment. And uh, seeth Abraham afar off, 
and Lazarus in his bosom. Then verse number 24, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip uh, the tip of his finger in water uh, and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. I want to tell you, my bloody friend, let me give you just a little I illustration on that. Uh, just a little bit of an illustration. Uh, uh, just uh, 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 the tip of his finger was all that he wanted, my beloved friend, and all that he asked for. He asked that Lazarus would just tip the, uh, uh, the tip of his finger in water and let a drop fall upon his tongue because he was tormented in the flame. I'm here to tell you, my beloved friend, oh, listen, amen, there is a torment of fire in hell. And if you die lost and undone without God, if you die unprepared to meet God, if you die, my beloved friend, having never placed your faith and your trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, you will immediately drop into hell and you will be tormented in, in fire in hell, my beloved friend. And so we go, want to go on just a, a little bit further. And I want you to notice again in verse number uh, uh, 23 and, 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 and just a few other verses here. First of all, I want you to notice, my beloved friend, that when uh, 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 the rich man went to hell, he was still in possession of all his senses. First of all, I want you to look in verse number 23. Notice here what he said. In hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Well, I want to tell you, my beloved friend, when the rich man dropped into hell, he lift up his eyes, and he still was in possession of his sight. I want to tell you, one of the, I, I want to talk about something right here, right quickly. At this point, my beloved friend, and I share something with you that I believe. I believe one of the greatest torments in hell. I want you to notice here what happened. He said in hell he lift up his eyes being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. I want to tell you, my beloved friend, that though there was a great gulf fixed in between hell and and paradise. This was when paradise was in the heart of the earth. It's not there now. It's been moved, my beloved friend, into heaven. But I want to tell you something, my beloved friend. Uh, the rich man uh, was able to lift up his eyes. He was still in possession of his sight, and he looked afar off, and he saw Lazarus, or he saw Abraham, my beloved friend, and Lazarus in Abraham's bosom, and he saw that Lazarus was comforted while he was tormented. I believe one of the greatest uh, sufferings of hell is going to be, my beloved friend, have you ever stood in the dark and looked in, my beloved, to a lit house? Have you ever done that? And then have you ever stood on the inside of a lit, a lit house with an open window and tried to look outside in the dark? You can't do it. Uh, the, the light produces a mirror effect. And whoever's outside in the dark, they can see in. But whoever's inside in the light, my beloved, they cannot see out. All they can see is a reflection just like a mirror. I'm here to tell you, beloved friend, I believe that one of the greatest punishments of hell and one of the greatest sorrows of hell and one of the greatest sufferings of hell is to be able to look over into heaven and be able to see the joys of heaven and be able to see your loved ones, your family, your friends that died in the Lord that were saved by the grace of God but you turned away Jesus Christ and you'd have none of him and you died in your sin and you, and you went down quick into the pit and you died lost without God and went to a devil's hell and you're able to see the joys of heaven. You're able to see your loved ones and, and your friends and your neighbors that were saved by the grace of God enjoying the joys of heaven but you yourself are in torment and you cannot escape and you cannot get out. I want to tell you, my beloved friend, the rich man still had his sight in hell. Now I want you to notice not only that, my beloved friend, we've already covered it in the earlier verses that he was tormented in the flame. He still was in possession of the feelings of his flesh. I don't understand it. I don't know how it is. 
And my beloved friend, you're going to have something, uh, whether it's some kind of temporary spiritual body or something like that, you're going to have something, my beloved, in hell that's going to be able to feel pain. You'll feel pain and you'll feel anguish, my beloved, and a torment in the fire and you can't do anything about it, my beloved friend. There's no relief from it. There's no kind of painkiller or anything like that. You can't go to sleep. You can't lose consciousness. You can't in any way escape from the feeling that you've got, my beloved friend, as you burn in hell forever and forever and forever. Not only that, my beloved friend, but I want you to uh, notice uh, and, and then you'll find that in verse 23 and 24. Uh, he, and he, 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 in hell he lift up his eyes being in torment and saith to Abraham afar off send Lazarus, uh, in, uh, Lazarus in his bosom and he cried and said Father Abraham have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. So we can see that he still had feeling. He still had thirst, my beloved friend. Have you ever really been thirsty? I'm talking about really been thirsty. You ever had to go a long time, maybe uh, maybe 12 hours or, or, or 24 hours, something like that, uh, without being able to get just a little cool drink of water. And beloved friend, you begin to suffer after a while. You're going to suffer thirst forever in hell, my beloved friend, and a lake of fire, and you won't be able to get a drink. Just like the rich man, you'll desire just a drop of water to fall on your tongue and to cool your parched tongue because you are tormented in the flame. Not only that, my beloved friend, I want you to notice verse 25 verse, uh, through verse number 27. Verse number 25, But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this there is a great gulf uh, between us, and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they that would pass from thence to you cannot, neither can they go to that uh, pass to us that would come from thence. Then I want you to notice what he said. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that they may testif that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. I want to tell you, my beloved friend, the rich man was still in possession of his memory. He remembered that he had five brethren uh, back uh, back there, my beloved, uh, still on the earth, on the surface of the earth, still living, my beloved, and they were no doubt going in the same way that he was. And he said, uh, Father Abraham, will you just send Lazarus? Will you just send him to warn my brethren? I want to tell you, you know, I've had I heard people, uh, preachers preach over the years that there won't be any love in hell. I'm here to tell you, beloved friend, I believe there will still be love. You'll still have your love in hell. And I want to tell you the, uh, uh, something that is far worse than going to hell yourself is the knowledge that your brother or your sister, your mother or your dad, your spouse or your children are going to follow you into hell. I want to tell you the rich man still remembered his brothers and he still loved them and he did not want them to follow him to that awful place of torment. Oh, it'd be bad enough knowing that you, my beloved friend, had caused yourself to go to hell, but it'd be a torment realizing and knowing that you caused one of your loved ones to follow you to that awful place of torment. Not only that, but we want to go on just a little bit further. And we notice in uh, verse number uh, uh, 24, in, in verse 24, we notice here, he cried and said, and I want to say to you, beloved friend, you're still going to be in possession of your ability of speech when you're in hell. You'll spend an eternity. And he began to cry out. You see, he, he was still praying. And uh, he, was, uh, 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 he still was in, the, uh, in possession of the ability to pray, but it did him no good. He cried out and said, Father, mercy, uh, Father Abraham, have mercy 
on me. You'll cry out to, for mercy throughout all eternity, but nobody will hear your prayer. Oh, my beloved friend, and certainly no one will answer your prayer. You'll still be in possession of the ability to speak and the ability to pray. But I want, I want to tell you, my beloved friend, uh, going on just a little bit further, uh, I, want to, I want to tell you, beloved, that there is no escape from hell. I want you to notice in verse number 26, in verse number 26, Abraham says unto the rich man, and beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would come, which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. My beloved friend, there's a great gulf between heaven and hell. At this time, paradise was in the heart of the earth. Now, I want to tell you, I believe the Bible teaches plainly. I, it's a spiritual place. And, um, a man can never discover it, and that man can never drill down to it and find it. But hell is in the heart of the earth. The Bible plainly teaches that. Not only that, my beloved friend, before Jesus ascended back to the Father, paradise was also in the heart of the earth. But there was a great gulf fixed between paradise and hell so that no one could pass from one side to the other. And if there was a great gulf then that was impossible to pass before uh, Jesus arose from the dead and moved paradise into heaven itself where the throne of God is, how great is that gulf now? I want to tell you, my beloved friend, there is no escape from hell. No matter how many candles anybody lights for the dead, no matter, my beloved friend, how many prayers are said, for the dead, no matter, my beloved friend, how many rosaries are said or anything like that, as I said earlier, there is no halfway place. There is no place called purgatory. There is no, my beloved friend, if somebody, uh, the, the Bible said, blessed are they that die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, they do rest from the labor and their works do follow them. The, 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 uh, and again, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The righteous dead, those that are saved by the grace of God, when they die, they go immediately into heaven, into the presence of God. They go where the throne of God is. They go where Jesus is. My beloved friend, those that die un unsaved, unprepared to meet God without their sins under the blood drippings of Calvary, and never being born again, never crying out to God for mercy, never believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and the finished work of the cross of Calvary. They die, at, by my beloved friend, and drop immediately into the pit of hell, and there is no escape for them. Isaiah 38 and 18, they that go down into the pit cannot hope for truth. Then again, my beloved friend, the fact that hell is inside the earth, Psalm 63 and 9, that those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. Then my beloved friend, oh, I want to tell you, Ephesians 4 and 9, he, Christ, also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. The Bible said he went and preached unto the spirits in the prison, and he delivered them to glory, thank God. But, oh, my beloved friend, there's no escape for the unrighteous dead. Oh, listen, my beloved friend. Uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 9 uh, beloved, the Bible tells us who shall be punished, speaking of the wicked dead, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. No way that you can get out of hell. No way that you can come into the presence of God. The Bible said that sin shall not enter in to that city, my beloved friend. Oh, listen, but I, I'm so glad that the Bible tells us he who knew no sin was made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. But I'm here to tell you, beloved friend, there is no escape from hell. Then the last thing that I want to give you, my beloved friend, the only way to, believe, to avoid hell is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and repent of your sin. Notice verse number 29 and verse number 31. And Abraham said unto him, when he cried and said, Send Lazarus, that he may testify my brethren, that they come not to this awful place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, 
Let them hear them. I want to tell you, my beloved friend, you better heed the word of God. You better hear what the, what the gospel has said unto you. The apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, he said, I declare unto you the gospel which I also received and by which you are saved and wherein you stand. He said in, uh, again, he said, moreover, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also have received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You're going to have to heed the gospel if you expect, my beloved, to escape an awful place that's called hell. Paul wrote the, the Roman church in, in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse number 15, he said, I am now ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Then in verse number 16, he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. You're going to have to believe the gospel if you're going to be saved. Jesus began to walk on the seashore of Galilee as he began his earthly ministry. And he began to pray and to say, repent and believe the gospel for the kingdom is at hand. I want to tell you, beloved friend, you're running out of time. You better get ready before it's too late. The Bible said, be also ready for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man coming. I want to tell you, Jesus is soon coming. But even if he don't come soon, my beloved friend, even if he don't come before your time has run out, death is waiting on you out, out there somewhere. The Bible said there is no discharge from that warfare. I want to tell you, beloved friend, the Bible said again in another place, it's appointed unto men once to die. In the book of Hebrews, it's appointed unto men once to die. And after this, the judgment, I want to tell you, you're going to die. My beloved friend, you die without Jesus. You die without the blood of, Cal uh, of Jesus applied to your heart. You, you die, my beloved, without putting your faith in the finished work of the cross of Calvary and crying out to Jesus for mercy, repenting of your sin. You'll go down fast into the pit. You'll drop into hell and there'll be no escape for you. Oh, listen, the only way to avoid an awful place that's called hell is to believe and to repent. Second thought, uh, Thessalonians 2 and 10, it's uh, speaking of them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. The only reason you can die lost and go to devil's hell, you refuse what God gave for you. You refuse the sacrifice that the darling Son of God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, made for you on the cross of Calvary. My beloved friend, that's why you'll die lost and you'll go to the devil's hell. The only way you can avoid that is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, as the scripture said, and thou shalt be saved. For the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, which is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And he went on to say, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why don't you believe on him today? Why don't you repent of your sin today? Why don't you call upon him today to save you and put your faith and your trust in him? Then again, in Luke, uh, Luke chapter 13, verses 3, and verse number 5, they came to Jesus. They told him about a tire in Salon that fell on so many men and killed them. Jesus answered and said unto them, said, Suppose ye that they were sinners above all that dwelt in Jerusalem? But he said, I say unto thee, Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And they, uh, they told him, my beloved friend, about those whom Pilate had mingled their blood with their sacrifice. And Jesus asked, Suppose ye that these men were sinners above other men? He said, But I say unto you, Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. I'm here to tell you, beloved friend, if you don't repent of your sin, if you don't turn away from your sin, repent of the sin that you've done. Confess unto God that you're a sinner. Tell him that you're sorry that you're a sinner and turn from your sin and f put your faith and your trust in the resurrected Savior, in, the, in, in his, his atoning death on the cross of Calvary. 
Thank God in his glorious resurrection. Believe that with all your heart and cry out to him for mercy, asking him to forgive you of your sin. If you don't do that, my beloved friend, when you die, you're going to go down quick into the pit. Just as soon as you close your eyes in death, you're going to be like the rich man and lift your eyes in hell. Why don't you repent before it's too late? Why don't you turn to God before it's too late? Till we All right, we want to say that we thank God for uh, you uh, uh, checking out our channel and listening to our message. We ask you again that you would hit the like button. We ask you that you would share with uh, others on Facebook and other social media. Tell others about uh, uh, the Rock of My Salvation Ministries channel or uh, Preacher Chris Christian channel or the uh, uh, Vision Independent Missionary Baptist Church channel, whichever one you've come in on. Uh, we would uh, ask also that you would sus subscribe to our channels and uh, we appreciate you and thank God for you from the depths of our heart. And we uh, pray that the message was insightful and it helped you. And I know it's not a very, very, uh, 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 I mean, it's not a subject people want, uh, like very much to hear about, but it's one certainly that's needed in the day and age that we're living in. If you've not saved by the grace of God, I hope you'll call on him today. Don't die unprepared to meet God and go to that awful place that's called hell. Till we meet again, this is Brother Chris saying, God bless you is my prayer.